Some people claim that UIs created using UI Toolkit are more performant than those created using classic canvas. But is it really true? To test this out, I have created two identical UIs, one of which is using canvas and the second one is using UI Toolkit. When creating these UIs, I really didn't do any additional optimization, so this should be the raw experience that the user will get. Let's start with the static UI and this time it is the UI created using canvas. You can see that we are sitting at about 1000 frames per second, which is quite decent. Now we are looking at the same UI just created using UI Toolkit and you can see that we are getting around 1200 to 1300 of frames per second. So in the static UI, UI Toolkit seems to be doing better. Now let's take a look at the batch count using canvas. So in total we have 11 batches, 7 of which are from the camera and 4 of those batches are from the UGUI rendering. So in the UI Toolkit we are getting only 6 batches, 3 of those are from the camera and 3 of those are again from the UGUI dot rendering and we are drawing just 2 meshes. The batch count in both of these cases is quite low because I'm using atlases for some of these sprites. This just means that we don't have individual sprites, but they are all in one big image. So here UI Toolkit again seems to be doing a bit better. Let's check the profiler using canvas. We can see the CPU overhead of the UI is really just 0.01 milliseconds. Let's take a look at the rendering and this seems to be around 0.15 milliseconds. We can also take a look down at the memory which is 107 megabytes and if we scroll down we should find the UI but this doesn't really show anything because it is probably about 0 milliseconds. Let's see about the UI toolkit. We can see the CPU overhead of the UI is lower, it is really just 0 milliseconds. Let's take a look at the rendering and we seem to be getting around 0 0.15 milliseconds again. And for the memory we have 160 megabytes, which is a bit worse but really nothing to worry about and on the UI again we don't see anything. Even though these statistics are favoring the UI toolkit a bit, in reality the frames per second on the UI toolkit and on the canvas are pretty much the same. So here we have the dynamic version of the UI using canvas, we can try just looking into it, scrolling, go to the settings, try to move some sliders check some checkbox and so on, we seem to be getting around 800 frames per second. Now we can go to the animate section, which is going to play some fancy animation and still we are at about 800 frames per second. Now we are in the UI toolkit, we are getting around 1300 frames per second. This is even better, so try going to the inventory and now it really starts to drop down to even 500 frames per second, which is quite bad. We can also go to the settings tab try moving some stuff, you can see that it works the same way as in the canvas, but the frames are dropping quite badly, we are often getting to 500 frames per second, which definitely for this simple UI should not be happening, so there may be some other optimization I could make, but this is just the raw version of the UI. And last thing, try to animate it, and we are getting at about 100 frames per second, which is really bad. So this time canvas definitely won because the frames per second were a lot more persistent and we definitely didn't reach below 500 frames per second with the canvas. So we are in the canvas, let's see how many batches we got. In total we get 16 and it's drawing a lot of meshes, the camera that render has just one batch and you can see all these statistics here. In terms of the CPU usage, we are getting around 0.03 milliseconds for the UI and for the rendering it is about 0.15 to 0.20. Let's see about the UI toolkit, so again I have the settings menu opened. In total we are getting just 6 batches and for the CPU usage we are getting again around 0 milliseconds and for the rendering we are getting around 0.15. So based on these statistics, it should seem that the UI toolkit should be more performant, but when I try playing the animations, you will see that it really gets worse. So overall, I would say that the canvas is more reliable and the frames per second are more persistent. So does this mean that no one should use UI toolkit? Definitely not. The performance is bad, just in my case, because I haven't optimized it. The animations I made are just used by switching styles, so a better approach would be to make it using Dootween. If you are familiar with web development, then you should definitely at least try UI Toolkit because it is really similar to web development and in that case you may feel better working with it. Let's talk about the pros and cons of using UI Toolkit. The first reason why I would use it is that you can use styles in it, so it is a lot easier to create many elements 
and have the same style applied to all of them. The further reason, at least for me, is that it seems more precise, because you are inputting the coordinates of the elements using pixels or percent based on the size of the screen. And if you really play with it, you can make sure that the UI looks really great on all devices. You can also set margin and padding of the visual elements, which also seems quite useful for me. And the fourth point why you should use it is that it is really simple to build UIs with it. You can just drag elements in and it is going to automatically order them, let's say from the left to right or from top to bottom, as you want. And this will also make sure that all of the elements are nicely aligned and nothing is going more to the right and more to the left. And what are the cons of using UI Toolkit? Overall, it is the lack of functionality, even though Unity has been working on it for a few years, there is still quite some functionality missing. For example, it doesn't fully support workspace UIs, even though there is a way to create them, it is not fully supported. And because the UI created using UI Toolkit is actually outside of the scene, you obviously can't add any materials, shaders and other components to the elements. It is also missing some simple animation tool, even though you can create animations by switching styles, if you want to create many animations, it is quite painful. And when it comes to coding, when you are referencing all of the elements from the UI in your C-sharp script, you need to use strings as the names of the elements, which is really bad because you can just misspell one of the letters and then your code is not working. The Unity development team has pretty much all of these problems that I addressed on the roadmap, so it is possible that in the future we'll have a perfect UI builder which will be the UI toolkit. But for now, most of you should stick with the classic canvas. So in conclusion, the performance, at least in my case, was worse for UI toolkit and I would recommend to use it if you are familiar with web development. Otherwise, I don't really see that big of a reason to use it because it is less reliable, even though there is some edit functionality such as these styles, but really not much more. If you have a different point of view on using UI Toolkit or I missed something, then let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to check out our Discord server in the description, like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.